Hello everyone and welcome to day 54 of 100 Days of Code in IoT Challenge. I'm Thomas and this is the channel that educates you on IoT and web development by showing how to build projects step by step. Today I'm going to show you how to scale up the snake on the screen. So basically how to make any element that we display on the screen bigger, right? So for every single pixel, we're going to scale it up to four or nine pixel squares. Let's get started. Okay, right. So here we go again. There is the code, the latest code from yesterday, a fully working snake game, but with a small issue. And that issue is not in the functionality. The game uh, works perfectly. The problem is with the size of the snake, with the uh, thickness of the snake, right? At the moment, it's very thin. It's just one pixel. And because of that, it's quite hard for the snake to eat the food, right? It's, it's really hard to, you know, to control the snake, to steer it on the food. And, uh, and the, my plan for today is essentially to, to uh, scale up the snake, scale up it uh, and uh, take more pixels uh, for, for, for a single segment. And uh, um, one requirement for that, for, for making this happen, would be to try to avoid changing anything in the game logic, right? And by the game logic, I mean a snake itself and, uh, and the game, okay? So game struct, snake struct, I try to limit the modification. There is one modification I would like to do to improve clarity a little bit. Um, but um, apart from that, I'm not planning to change anything in there. But yeah, you will see in a second, well, what, what do I mean by that? Because we could essentially just figure out everything with, with, the, with the TFT screen. It's just, uh, it's just on the TFT screen to display it. But yeah, let me show you how. Okay, so here is, the, here is how it looks like at the moment. You probably remember from yesterday, We've got an empty space in here at the top of the screen right now, so we can display the score, right? In, in like live score in the real time. And uh, here is the snake field, right? So let me just draw a simple snake over here. So we've got the snake. You remember every single field element, right? This is a two dimensional field array. Sorry, this, this is actually gonna be, right? That's the memory representation. Y starting from zero, ending on 17. This is just the screen representation of coordinates, right? So this is this is our uh, two-dimensional array, a field array, and uh, a single field element is this one. It's just the relative position to the previous segment of the snake if it's not empty, okay? So all of those empty, other others are wall, and we have the relative values, right? So that means the previous segment is right, 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 and this is just the head of the snake, okay? So that's how it uh, works at the moment, and they take exactly one pixel on the screen, right? And my plan is for a single segment on the screen to take more pixels than one, okay? But to represent it correctly, I'm just going to move it, um, I'm just gonna move it here, okay? So here is our snake and uh, I would like to, on the screen, I would like to turn uh, this into something like that. So there is one R, now we have a second R. So that's gonna be here, third R, fourth, right? We had a four R segment, I think, and then the head segment, okay? And I guess you, you probably, realized what I'm doing here, but let me just uh, help myself with the with the color to explain what is this about. Right, um, this is, is it the one? No, that's not the color I went for. Yeah, we can go with this one. We go with this one again. And, uh, and this one, actually, no, let me just change that. So because this is a head, I'm gonna use a different color. Okay, right. But that also should be a different color, by the way. Okay, so now it's better, right? 
So that is a single segment uh, now, okay? So that's how, how I would like that to be represented on the screen. And this is, uh, it's, it's something, something needs to be done with the scale, right? With the scale. Do we have to change the snake logic? No, as I mentioned, it's not necessary. However, we're gonna have to calculate the, we're gonna have to calculate the difference. We're gonna have to change the width and height of the representation of the snake in the memory. Okay. And that, that, that also applies for the wall, right? Because I would like to scale an entire game. So now the wall is also gonna take two, right? It's also gonna be two, two by two pixels, right? That's what I'm trying to do, okay? So that's gonna be like that and also like that. And yeah, maybe let me, sh let me show you how, how, what do I mean? That's how it's gonna look like ultimately. And the space, space, uh, empty space for the score at the at the top is gonna remain as it is, right? But yeah, as you can see now, that's that's a single wall, uh, wall uh, segment, right? Wall element, but it's gonna be represented on the on the screen uh, differently, right? So that's the plan. Also for the moving for everything, the the the, the everything is gonna be uh, basically taken into account, and it's gonna just work as as it as it works with a single uh, pixel segment snake. Cool. Okay. But yeah, how can I achieve this state? Um, I can do it by working out, drawing the pixels essentially, right? So this one is for the foot. Oh yeah. That's something I missed, but yeah, also for the foot, we will have two by two square. Okay. And you know, we could even scale it uh, up further. That's also my plan to, to implement it in a way that you can have a three by three pixel for a single segment of this snake. But I'm going to come back to this once we do two by two. Anyway, yeah, uh, going back to TFT. So TFT is going to be where I would like to implement that behavior. Because yeah, as I said, I don't want to change the, the logic. The logic doesn't have to change. What we just need to do is to uh, draw, instead of drawing one pixel with TFT, right, for the foot, for every single uh, snake segment and for the wall, instead of drawing one, one pixel, we're gonna draw four, but also on the representation of the memory, I have to scale it down, right? Because as, as I scale it up on the screen, I have to scale it down in the memory, right? I have to scale it down in the memory and it is visible here, it is visible in the spreadsheet if you look at that, because now we have twice less space for the snake to move, right? After all these changes, right? So a single pixel on the screen, now it's two by two. So essentially it's, it's, it shrinked, right? It decreased by the scale of two for the width and for the height. So if the height at the beginning was 160, uh, sorry, 128. Now it's gonna be 64. If it was on the width, it was 160. Now it's gonna be 80, right? For the height, it's gonna be slightly different uh, because we're taking up uh, in the in the code. It's eight pixels taken from here, so it's 120 by by two, which is gonna be 60, right? So essentially, what I'm gonna have to do is to decrease these values. And then draw a square uh, in every single place where I draw the pixel, right? So that is for the foot. That is for the, the first draw of the snake and the wall. And uh, these two are to remove the tail and add the head in front of the snake. So that also has to be like that, okay? But yeah. Before I do that, as I said, small, small change, small refactoring, because at the moment there is something I don't like in this code, which is on the snake itself and uh, its relation to the game, right? So um, we've got the, we've got the snake reference passed to the game, but game doesn't really verify if the uh, width and height of the snake match 
the width and height of the game. Okay, it's all, I mean, it is all connected with the constants, but ideally, instead of taking the constants here on the snake, and then um, just, you know, using this constants in the game straight away, which is sort of like, you know, external from that struct, I would rather take them as a, as a template arguments. And that's what I'm gonna do first, right? So first we look at the game. And here in the game, I'm just gonna take them as a template size T. Now let's just have width and height. So that, that is one thing I would like to do. And then the second thing is going to be to check if the snake size matches it. But yeah, let me just do uh, that first, right? I'm gonna have to add the template here as well. So now we can operate on width and height instead, pass to the game. So what I can do is to just go to here and change that. And there is uh, some other places I have to change the width, I think. But yeah, that's gonna be this width. So that is on the game. That is not where I need to change that. This is where I have to change that, right? So field for each. And there is also add wall, right? It's basically getting rid of this external global dependency on the on the on the width and height constants. That is one as well. It's also gonna make it more flexible if you think about that. Uh, any more width? No, I think this is it. This is it, okay? But yeah, now because game takes the templates arguments, I can take a width and height, okay? So that is the first modification. I'm gonna try to compile it to see if the code is still gonna work or if we get any issues that we got. And I think those issues are mainly on the... Yeah, okay, there is some of them. So some issues that we've got is on the free end, free end game, okay, I see. So now because, yeah, we have a free end game, we're gonna have to either make it a template and uh, accept any any size T or you know what I could actually work out the snake instead maybe uh, Do we want to make it a template do I want to make it a template as well? You know what? This is the only place where the snake struct itself is responsible for Yeah for determining the head and tail and the rest happens in the in the game struct, which is sort of not okay. That's also something I wanted to uh, uh, refactor before. So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, maybe keep the right here as a default one, and then I'm gonna get rid of uh, these calculations from here and move them to the game. Uh, not here, obviously. That's gonna just go to start. Maybe even add snake would be the place to do that. I'm just thinking. Yeah, maybe add snake would be the place. So we will do add snake is just gonna do that. We can work out this 10 uh, for the length later on. So I do that. And now it's all gonna be determined automatically. But yeah, basically that has to be width. And that has to be height. So now we're gonna make sure that this matches the actual snake. But yeah, the friend, the friend problem has to be solved. And this is not very difficult. I just need to do friend class game. And I think I just need to add a template somewhere here. And that should do. 
And there is other issue. Ah, should be classes. Eh? But there is other issue, I'm afraid. Um, that's that is with something else, isn't it? Yeah. It is with Oh yeah, okay, sorry. That is my fault. Just moving stuff around. It's just a small refactoring to have uh, one step uh, towards better code. And I think the next issue is, yeah, okay, so this one is not required anymore. So we are uh, essentially, we don't need to pass anything to the constructor. And I think finally, there is a problem with the game itself here because it requires the template arguments. Uh, but I don't want to copy it over everywhere, so you know what? I'm just going to use the using clause to to do something like maybe TFT game equals that. So we can now use TFT game as the as the alias. Basically, it's gonna be easier to use it because yeah, otherwise I would have to pass the uh, this bracket with the with the template arguments. Yeah, probably not. I think I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. Okay. So there is just one thing that's left, uh, which is on the head over here, and that should solve all the issues. Okay. Yeah. So this this small refactoring is done now. And basically, um, yeah, it's gonna, it's just gonna take care of it here. Um, one more thing, one more thing, because I can do it super quickly, would be to maybe add a snake size. But I'm just thinking, what, what is better? Get it as a template argument, or as an actual argument? Maybe as an actual. Yeah, that'd be runtime. So we get snake reference. And we could get the snake size. Or you know what? Should it be on... Should it be on the snake here? Maybe here. We take it and then based on that we figure this out. Yeah, I think that'd be better. So we'll have something like uint 8t. And that's going to be size, just the size like that. And we will get that uint 8t size. And that is going to be just the size of the snake. I can take a default size of uh, maybe 4, maybe 4, something like that. And yeah, uh, that is gonna maybe four is a little bit too small. Let's let's get six, okay? So we get six, and then we can determine the size in the add snake, right? So we will divide. Uh, that is the location, right? So it's width uh, divided by two plus, and that will be snake size. That'd be snake size divided by 2 minus 1. And that'd be minus snake size divided by 2. That's just it, right? Yeah, and then that, that'd be it. So hang on, uh, or maybe other way around. We will do over the way around. So basically, that's gonna be the head. So the head is basically snake size which is, uh, as a default one, it's a 6, isn't it? Yeah, that's 6. So we have 6. 6 divided by 2, that's 3, right? So that's going to be somewhere in the middle. So let's say middle is 10 plus 3 is 13. And then uh, this is going to be size 10 minus. And that's going to be a size 3. So that's 7. But we also need to take into account that there is going to be an extra pixel if we just continue with this approach. 
So uh, that's that's what I'm I'm, I'm just uh, taking this into account, and and that's why a minus one in here, right? But it's not that important at the moment. I can I can I can change it later. I'm not sure if I calculated it correctly, but I can always change it later. We don't really care if the snake is gonna be size of six or seven. We just need a small snake to start with. Cool. Okay, uh, let's get that done. So, so right. So that'd be the first step. Let me just make sure it compiles. Yeah, that compiles. Right. So that is solved. So that later the factoring is solved. And uh, now let's figure out how can we do the scale, right? So how can we do the scale? The first step would be to look at the width and height and uh, calculate it depending on the scale. Okay. So I'm gonna introduce another variable here, uh, sorry, another constant, I'm going to call it scale. And for now, I'm going to put it as one, right? This is going to be one. Then there we have width, that's going to change to screen width, and height, that's going to change to screen height. We keep height shift, but we also going to define width and height the actual values that, that and they gonna be calculated based on the scale, right? So we'll do screen width divided by the scale, right? If the scale is two, then it's essentially gonna be divided by two, like I showed you with this one, right? It's gonna be twice less, twice as less of a space on the screen. So if we have scale two, that's gonna be for the width, it's gonna be 80 instead of instead of uh, 160, right? The width in the memory. We're talking about the memory here. And the height is gonna be, this is a bit more tricky because uh, we, we're gonna have to scale uh, this, the, the screen height, but also we have to take into account the height shift but height shift also needs to be scaled. So that is something like that, right? Oh yeah, that's, by the way, that's minus, right? We taking up some space. Okay, um, let me quickly explain why this is the case, why it's height shift divided by scale. So again, if the scale is two, right? Remember width and height are the constraints of the representation of the snake field in the memory, right? So if we're gonna take a two pixels by two pixels for every single segment, for every single field on the screen, we'll have twice as a less of a space. So we won't have 160 and 120 as for memory width and memory height, but 80 and 60. And now on top of that, we've got a height shift that is to leave some space at the top for the score. And if the scale is one, that is eight, right? That is eight pixels because eight pixels represented in the memory is eight pixels represented in on the screen, right? If the scale is two, that's changes of the magnitude of two, if you think about that, right? Because that eight pixels that you represent on the screen, at the top of the screen now, are represented as a four pixels in the memory. And that's why I divided height shift by, by the scale, okay? Right, so this is this mapping of the, the representation from the memory to the to the screen and also for the height shift, it's, it is the same. We also have to take it into account. So that's why I did that. I'm gonna keep a scale one just to make sure that when I run the game, it's it's just working as it worked before. And then we try to do that with the scale. Okay, don't forget to change screen height to 128, right? Because the height shift is gonna be taken into account in here. So that should be 128. Okay, so that is, that is the first step. And now the second step, right? We don't have to touch, we don't have to touch this or that anymore. The second step would be to look at the draw pixel, right? Because draw pixel at the moment, what it does, it just draws a single pixel. Now we want to draw more pixels depending on the scale, right? I would like to use the scale constant as something that might change. And based on that, 
uh, draw more pixels, right? So if it's a scale of two, we want to draw four pixels, basically a square two by two. But if, uh, if the scale is three, we want to write, uh, we want to draw, write uh, 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 three pixels by three pixels of a square on the screen, right? So that's also gonna be taken into account. Um, so, you know what, I'm just thinking about defining a function, right? Let's go with the simplest way. So I'm going to define a function and I'm going to call it TFT draw, maybe draw pixel at scale, something like that. And do something like that. We could even take a scale here. Um, but yeah, maybe not not now, not now, because that can be essentially refactored in the future, and uh, I could create another class for TFT that encapsulates uh, or or keeps the references to the game and the snake, and uh, you know take, to take care of of everything, right? Of of things like you know moving the snake, drawing the basically drawing the pixels, right? Adding drawing the pixels on top of the snake logic right but not not today it's too much of too much work um so yeah just a simple um just a simple function tft draw pixels at a scale and that's gonna take x and y coordinates and the color the color is u n u in 16 The color because uh, some of the pixels are green, some of them are uh, white. So th that's something we and some of them are black, right? So that that's why I'm taking the color in here, and then inside, what we essentially want to do is to draw a square, a square based on the scale, right? So the x and y in here are coming from the memory. Okay, these are coming from the memory. And what I would like to do here is to do TFT draw pixel on X number of pixels. That is going to be a square, right? So I'm going to essentially need to draw a square here, right? It can be either a single pixel square. So it's just going to be a single instruction, but it can be two by two pixel square. And then we will have four instructions. If it's a three by three, then we have nine instructions, right? So we need four loop to do the square. And for the for loop, uh, I'm just going to define something like, uh, uh, maybe let's call it, maybe let's call it, um, maybe let's have like something like xi that starts from zero and finishes at the scale, just before the scale. I will explain in a second why is this uh, this is the case. And inside that for there's going to be another for for loop, but this time it's going to be with y. Okay, so we'll have something like that. And inside, it's just going to be TFT draw pixel where. Yeah, I'm just going to pass that like this. Height shift needs, needs to stay. We need to take it into account. But now we need to figure out the values for X and Y, okay? The, which is like for the X, we do X where this X that is coming from here is from the memory. Maybe I, I help myself slightly. So we will have something like, uh, uh, sorry, uh, X, M and Y, M. So we know that's coming from the memory. So we'll have x from memory multiplied by the scale, right? If it's zero, it's gonna be zero, but if it's one, it's gonna be two. If it's two, it's gonna be four. If it's three, it's gonna be six and so on, right? If the scale is three, then we're gonna have zero, three, nine, and so on, right? It's just gonna jump three, right? So it's gonna be jump three pixels, but it's not just drawing single pixel, we need to draw a scale minus one pixels, right? So that's gonna be plus x i, okay? And the same thing happens for the y m. 
we multiply it by scale and we add plus y i okay so that's essentially how this works it starts from the position of the memory x coordinate memory x coordinate multiplied by the scale so let's let's stick to scale of 2 maybe so that's gonna be 0 2 4 6 8 10 and so on but we also need to draw the, the second pixel that's why both of the loops start from 0 by the way right so the first value the first iteration for the x is gonna be plus 0 so that's just gonna be 0 2 4 6 8 and so on but then there's gonna be the second iteration which is gonna be 1 and that will be that will be essentially zero, that will be 1 3 5 7 9 and so on right so the odd values the same applies for y it's exactly the same formula but also takes into account the height shift that also has to be it has to be taken into account that's why i added it here but that's that's the, the only that only function that i'm going to have to use to make everything happen so that's that's how uh, this is, is going to work and and you know the color is gonna be uh, the same for everything um yeah i know th this can be a, a bit of confusing right so um i encourage you to experiment with that you can use the serial monitor and add the serial monitor for the x and y uh, so you can see you know why the the snake is gonna appear move on the screen you will see the actual coordinates that are calculated for the pixels to be displayed on the screen from here, right? So I encourage you to do that. But yeah, I'm just gonna move on now. So what I'm going to do is to pass, uh, sorry, to change this TFT draw pixel to TFT draw pixel at scale. And I don't need the height shift anymore because it's it's here, right? So that's the place where I change that. That is gonna be the place where I change that. And I think, yeah, these two places also are gonna be where I change that. And also I can remove the height shift now. So that should just do. Let me try to deploy this unless I forgot about something. No, it doesn't look like I forgot about something. So yeah, let me try to compile it. Cool, okay. Okay, so I'm going to deploy it now deployed and yeah the game seems to be working as it worked before remember this is scale of one let me just quickly score the point all right and i'm just going to hit the wall okay yeah that seems like it's something that, that i forgot you see the game over screen is not working properly let me quickly switch back to the code to fix it let me just quickly fix that issue with the game over. So that will be on the on here is basically taking the uh, the height instead of screen height, right? You're not really scaling the text in here, so that will be it. Let me just deploy it. Okay, and and now. We should see the game over like we've seen before. Yeah, cool. Okay, let me increase this scale to uh, 2. Okay, yeah, and as you can see, now the snake is thicker and it's actually easier to play. It seems to be a bit faster though. But I think it looks much better now. Yeah, it looks much better, but you know what? I'm going to increase the scale even further. Maybe I give it a 4. Let me try it. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, it's a bit too fast now. Yeah, it's a bit too fast. I would have to make it slower. Otherwise, I won't be able to score many points. But yeah, now I think it works even better. So 4 seems to be like uh, like the perfect scale for this kind of size of the screen. 
Okay, before I finish, two more things. So first of all, the delay here um, might cause an issue when you decrease the speed, uh, essentially increase. It shouldn't be called a speed, it should be like something. Uh, let me just change it maybe. Can I do something like that? No. Uh, inverted speed. Something like that, because that's not really a speed. But yeah, by the way, um, yeah, delay here, if you, now if you increase that, that uh, value, it's essentially gonna make the snake slower, moving slower on the screen. Um, you may have issues with the with the controls, with the control buttons, because of the delay itself. The delay blocks everything. I don't really like using the delay, but was the simplest solution at the time when I was coding it. And let me quickly fix it, because that's, that's just a few lines of code. So what I could do is to define unsigned long, unsigned, sorry, unsigned long variable, that I'm gonna call maybe next tick time and that is gonna have a default value of millis plus inverted speed okay and yeah so that will be next tick time and in here where we draw those pixels right this is this is what's responsible for the movement of the snake, I will just do something like next tick time. If the next tick time is less or equal than the actual millis, then we're gonna define a new next tick time plus inverted speed, and that is gonna happen, okay? So that it's gonna make it much better because it's not gonna be blocking anymore. Cool, okay, so that's one thing. And another thing, um, which is um, I'm thinking about changing the colors on the screen and I would like to change them to the exactly same colors we had with the original game on Nokia. Uh, and this is possible with that TFT screen let me just quickly show you, if I just click through on the color, then you will see from here in this comment that they use 16-bit 565 colors. For those colors, 565 color calculator, if, if you just Google that, we could essentially, this is an example page where you can just pass the hex value and that's gonna give you the value of this 16-bit colors that you would like to display, the pixel to display. And that's something I've done with the colors from the original game. I've got these colors calculated already, but yeah, it's just for you. Um, you can find a link in the description to this sort of calculators. So if you want to have your, your snake displayed in different color, go for it. Um, you have a choice of 565 colors, yeah, but thing is, my plan is to make it resembling Nokia 3310 snake, so I've got the colors. I've got the colors in here, let me just paste them as a constant, and I'm just gonna uh, swap the BG color with everywhere where I think this is just a single or two places where the, yeah. Instead of black, we'll have BG color. There's a background color. And I think what's missing is the foot, which is just gonna be the foot color, but it's the same color as the snake. So let me just find it. Yeah, that's, this is here foot color and I think that's it let me just try to compile it cool okay I'm gonna deploy it and we should see the snake the same color as the the one on Nokia right deployed and now we've got a snake resembling the one from Nokia 
right I try to use the uh, same colors as we got on a 3310 screen and I also decrease the speed of the snake slightly as you can see now before I finish I have a quick announcement to make unfortunately I won't be able to upload new videos on 100 days of code in IoT challenge anymore I'm going to explain why in tomorrow's video thanks for today and uh, see ya